had to give an overview of the state of youth in Oakland. What I would say is that we're at a, a very interesting point of sort of chaos and opportunity. A lot of what has happened to young people uh, in this city and around the country is that the needs of young people have really been very low on the public agenda. That we tend to only think about young people as problems to be fixed. That we don't think of young people as the assets uh, that they really are. We are people who can think, who are human beings too who are very intellectual and articulate and who can tell you about our problems that go beyond just all these negative stereotypes that are portrayed about us. In June of 1994, hundreds of Oakland youth came together to put on a show America had never seen before. Their stage was a downtown rooftop parking lot above the tough streets below. The parked cars were turned into a theater of teen confidences. You've seen them on TV many times, but you rarely hear them speak. That night, the roof was on fire. The performance was a collaboration of artists and community that became a pioneering model for social change. The Roof is on Fire was an unprecedented success, receiving local and national media coverage and giving teens a public platform to voice their views on the toughest subjects in their lives. If you're going to stereotype a person for a long time, they're going to start acting how you stereotype them. Oh, he black, he killed, you know, he do this, he do that, he do this. Well, if everybody going to focus on that main point in my life, I then might I might as well do it. Do it. I can't get eyes no other way out. I can't be accepted as for who I am and be trying to change and portray a certain image because I'm black or because I'm young. I'm a little adolescent. I'm 16 years old. I'm trying to make something of my life, but nobody won't help me, so I got to do it all by myself. The performance attracted the attention of the mayor, public officials from all over America, a live audience of over a thousand people and millions of home viewers. And people are pressured into sex all the time by males and they don't have the education to say no or to stand up for being wrong. They don't have any education about sex in this um, public school system. They don't have any education. They're not getting it from home. So why wouldn't they lay up in the bed with somebody? We broke a window. They called and must have told them we had guns because all I know is that Emeryville Police Department drove up inside of Annie Yates four cars. Everybody jumped out and had their shotguns telling us to get on the ground. Ten years old. Now, am I supposed to be traumatized or what? Police believe the killer is a 16-year-old girl and 17-year-old boy. This teenager was shot in a confrontation at his high school. One of the critical issues that youth identified in the Roof is on Fire was the ongoing tension between youth and police. Six months, young people and their advocates here have been working on a social contract with the city known as the Oakland Youth Policy. This is one of several events aimed at entertaining and engaging the public in that policy and other youth issues. The No Blood, No Foul event uh, that happened here in June uh, was an opportunity to create a different kind of dialogue. It was an opportunity to create a dialogue between the police department and young people. In this case, it was like, how do young people see these uniformed cops? Once they take off those uniforms, put on some basketball shoes, get out on the court, playing a game. But it was really about, like, how do we perceive young people? How do we think about them? Do we think about them as problems to be fixed? Or do we think about them as folks who can score a point? <laughs> It's actually a process of dialogue leading to a live event. The live event is the kind of touchstone that invites the community in. And the media is invited to provide a different kind of picture about a community in action. From the news leader in Northern California, News Center 4, this is Channel 7 News at 11. Keeping young people out of trouble is not easy these days, but in Oakland tonight, officials are trying a new approach that focuses more on involvement with kids and less on punishment. In Oakland tonight, there was an unusual meeting of young people and police officers. They met on a basketball court, but two groups are hoping to do much more than just play a game. What this game is really about is the beginning of a new commitment, officials say, to do more for young people in this city. As a community event, it was the kind of thing that I think has great potential because it starts to add the art and public policy dialogue together. It starts to put people from lots of different backgrounds in the same room to see.
The end of the game was the best part. Uh, the buzzer rang. The players sat down in small circles and began talking. And as the lights came back, the audience had to leave, passing through the small circles. And the players talked to each other about their lives. No blood, no foul. And events like that can make the youth and the police way closer. We'll have to come together. We have to come together in a way that we have, have never had to do before, but the, the uh, times and the sort of moment in history that we find ourselves in really requires us to do that. So a lot of what young people have done here in Oakland uh, through the Youth Policy Initiative and other things is to say, we all have a part of the answer to this problem. And if we all begin to really contribute to it, that we really will be able to shine some light and become a beacon, become a village center, become a place where young people and families and other people thrive in our community. had a single positive experience in my life. So I was to tell you the truth. I couldn't be around police without my stomach turning. A lot of us teenagers have had incidents where the cops abuse their power. I don't understand why you would feel comfortable talking to a police officer. I just don't understand. I mean, even before I became a cop, I grew up in Alabama. You talk about racist police officers, we got them. They're still down there. Okay, when the police officer well, why? stopped me... Why can't they get them off the force? Well, if they're racist and stuff, why do you guys even let them be That's a big question. Cops? Why are they bad cops? You know, I mean, if I'm innocent walking down the street, I would I would be upset too. The police put handcuffs on me. And that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. Why do you, I mean, why do you think you keep getting stopped? Cause I, I, I'm getting, man, I got, I gotta get on the panel, man. I, 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 Insolent before we even say a word. How is that, you know, mutual respect? And in this job, I kind of expect the public to listen when I say, hey, come here. You know, it's normally for a reason. I'm just not stopping you <laughs> for nothing. It's normally for a reason. I have that, I expect you to stop. I understand that you should respect your elders, but cops, older people should respect teenagers too. If you have a problem with somebody, you should talk it out. Don't just go yell and just come at me all well. You did this and you did that. Come at me at a civilized way and I'm going to come at you the same way. Who's at fault first? Whether it's the officer and the way he approaches you initially or whether it's the way you respond to him when he asks you, young lady, can I talk to you for a second? And if you go off on him, then okay, we're back to there again. Or if he approaches you wrong and say, come here. You know, what you want with me? You know, I, come here. You know, I, and, I said, come here. Next thing you know, it's he was on the ground. They had his hands behind him already. He already restrained, but they still punching him in his face. So, what's uh, I would say that's wrong. In ten years as a police officer, I have never seen a police officer hit a person that's been handcuffed. I'm not saying that that does not happen. I, obviously, it happens, but I have never seen it. It happened in Riverside to a young girl. What are you talking about? That never happened. I get shot down. I get shot down. Now, because you're a cop and because you made a mistake that I was reaching for something and because you ran my name and four years ago, I have something on my record. I got shot and it's okay. You may not even lose your job. That's how you're above the law. And you can and you have to admit that. Let me give you an example. A decorated cop, all right? 15 years in the force, kicking ass. The whole 15 years kicking he's on. Kicking ass the whole 15 years. Meaning he's been talking. making, hey, that's right. 
That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a good cop. I didn't say he was uh, uh, doing anything against him. I'm talking about a good cop. 15 years on the streets, all right? Everybody knows him. Everybody likes him in the apartment citizen. Like, he goes out there and makes a mistake like that. What do you think should happen to him? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. That's your attitude, though. Hey, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. A good cop like that that probably has 10 more years on the streets, he makes one freaking mistake. That's how people are. Screw him. Get him out of there. 15 years on the street, he can ask whatever, right? He makes one mistake. But we're on the streets, and we make one mistake. And what happens to us? Make one mistake, meaning what? One, uh, one mistake about what? 25 to I, I don't understand what you mean. Like breaking the law. She's saying if, if young people break the law, they don't get a second chance. That, that's not true. That that is not that's true. Not young, especially not young. That, that is not, not true at all. True. We just got done. We so got your late chair on a on a on a case where a guy just paroled after doing a, what three years for murder. He did three years for murder. Okay, so there are second chances. I think they just show us a little respect, a little trust. Do you ever have a mentor? A mentor, like, like somebody that you looked up to, or somebody that helped you out. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, this guy was, yeah, he's a cop. His name is Two Davis. Yeah, he be on, he be helping me out and stuff. I think that's cool because there's not too many cops in the field. I grew up in South Central Los Angeles, and uh, the same, some of the same things that that the the young adults are bringing up today are some of the things that I went through when I was a kid. Um, and there was a police officer that, that pulled me to the side and pretty much uh, kept me out of trouble. I was amazed at what a lot of these kids as students in schools, you know, struggling to do halfway well face in getting through a day. Where do we go from here? Yeah. Because again, it's just dialogue right now. What what are the solutions going to be? The community has to be involved. It just can't be police. Right, exactly.